So this is a video response to refuting the Noahide laws. Hello, my name is Joanna and um, I'll be refuting you today. First of all, I want to say that I am not a halakhic authority. Um, I do mess up and uh, my friends all know this. And if I should mess up in this video, I would like to say that um, if any of the people I respect and admire would like to refute me, please do. And um, I'm already sorry for whatever I say that's wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, on your first point, that the laws are not in the Torah. That's true. Um, I'd like to give you some reasons for that, and uh, I'd like to point out that they are, in fact, alluded to. Um, for, so why are they not in there? First of all, they're not for Jews in the first place. Um, they were never meant to be kept by the Jews. Uh, the Jews have the 613 laws of the Torah. Those are written in the Torah. Um, the nations are supposed to keep the laws themselves. And in fact, they were keeping these laws until the time of Balaam, but that's another story entirely. Um, but the point is that they were at one point keeping these laws. They were not needed. The Jews did not need to teach them the law because they already knew it. Um, Secondly, they are alluded to in the scripture. Um, for example, Cain, when he went to kill his brother, knew that murder was wrong. Um, and how could he have known? Before this, there had been no death. There had been no murder at all, which means that he had been taught that murder was wrong. By whom? By his father. Uh, and how did his father learn? He'd learned from God. Um, the law, uh, the command against eating a limb turned from a living animal. This was given to Noah. Um... I don't think that can be refuted. The law to establish courts, I think that we know that courts are very, very necessary. Um, without them, the world will be destroyed. The commands against idolatry and blasphemy. Um, I think we both agree that Noah and Adam worshipped God. They had um, altars, they sacrificed to God. Uh, how could they have done this without knowing, uh, first of all, who God was and without respect for him? Um, the prohibitions on forbidden nature course and stealing, I don't know what the problem you have with them is. If you have a problem with them, please let me know. I mean, I'd like to know what you have against them. Um, secondly, your um, claim that these laws were not given to prophets. How do you define prophet? If you define it as somebody who stands up and says, um, that says the Lord and talks about events that will happen in the future, then in that case, John the Baptist was not a prophet and Matthew 11 verse 9 and Luke 7 verse 16 are false. Um, if you want to say that a prophet is a man of God who obeys and loves God, then why were Adam and Noah not prophets? Okay, third point, um, that life is not through the laws. God said you should keep my laws and my rules by the pursuit of which man shall live. I am the Lord. Um, for for uh, further information on that, watch my videos. Um, Christian objections to Judaism, my responses, and uh, why keep the law. Fourth point, that, ab um, that eternal life doesn't come through keeping the law. I'm assuming that your basis for this is Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. You can't say, though, that this was at a time when he had done nothing for God. Yes, it was before his circumcision, but this was after he left the house of Terah, his father, and traveled to the land of Canaan. Um, this is after he um, had gone to fight the, sev the kings and rescued his nephew. This is He had displayed tremendous action in his faith. This was not simply that he believed God. This was a faith that he had acted on. Although he wasn't circumcised, um, it wasn't to say that he hadn't done anything for God. Your fifth point, the Gentiles are called um, and should be evangelized to. This is uh, uh, very true. And um, I have no no argument with it. Number six. Um, but I would like to say on your fifth point that it is the failure of the Jews to teach these seven laws. And it is the failure of the nations to listen to the Jews. Okay, sixth point. Um, that nobody keeps the laws and therefore they're not applicable. If you were caught going 80 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. And you told the judge, um, everybody was doing it. Or you told the judge, I didn't see the speed limit sign. Would the judge throw out your ticket? I don't think so. No. Okay. It's the same way with God. Nobody's keeping the law. Does that mean that you are free from your obligation to keep the law? No. 
you are still obligated to learn the laws that are incumbent upon you. You are still obligated to keep those laws. You are not free from your obligation to keep the law only because no one else is keeping it. Even if no one else in the world were to keep it, you would still be obligated to keep the laws that God put on you. Okay. Seventh point. That the laws are um, not do not allow or do not um, encourage a relationship with God. These laws, as one of the famous Noahide said very famously, are the chapters, are the titles of chapters of books. And the, as you study them, they become more and more to you and you start to understand the more, you start to learn the more. You get a greater understanding of uh, God and of His will and of His word as you understand and as you follow these laws. They are the bare minimum. They were never meant to be um, ends in themselves. Um, your eighth point that you bring up in the video, that God will not abolish sin. That's a very interesting claim. I am writing a huge book. I've got ten pages worth of scriptures about the Messianic era and what it will be like. Um, and one entire page is dedicated to this concept of God destroying sin. Um, I would, I'm not going to go through all the verses, but I want to read some for you and give you some other references. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 25, The wolf and lamb shall graze together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox, and the serpent's food shall be earth. In all my sacred mount nothing evil or vile shall be done, said the Lord. Zephaniah 3 verse 11 and 12, In that day you shall no longer be ashamed for all the deeds by which you have defied me, for I will remove the proud and exultant within you, and you will be haughty no more on my sacred mount, but I will leave within you a poor humble folk, and they shall find refuge in the name of the Lord. Zephaniah 3 verse 13, The revenant of Israel shall do no wrong and speak no falsehood. A deceitful tongue shall not be in their mouth. Only such as these shall graze and lie down with none to trouble them. Isaiah 33 verse 24, And none who lives there shall say, I am sick. And it shall be inhabited by folk whose sin has been forgiven. Isaiah chapter 29 verses 20 to 23. For tyrants shall be no more, the scoffers shall cease, those diligent for evil shall be wiped out, who cause men to lose their lawsuits, laying a snare for the arbitrary at the gate, and wronging by falsehood him who was in the right. Assuredly, thus said the Lord to the um, house of Jacob, who redeemed Abraham, No more shall Jacob be shamed, no longer shall his face grow pale, but when he that is his children, behold what my hands have wrought in his midst, they will hallow my name. Men will hallow the Holy One of Jacob and stand in awe of the God of Israel. And the confused shall inquire insight and grumblers accept instruction. Also read Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34. Jeremiah 32 verses 27 to 30. Ezekiel 11 verses 17 to 21. Micah chapter 4 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 27 verses 2 to 5. Thank you. God bless you.